It's easy to think of insulin resistance as one problem and fatty liver disease as another problem. But the interplay is quite interesting and how it comes to be is very interesting. You've seen me talk about Boo Foods before, but they have leveled it up. Check this out, okay, completely organic, completely non-GMO, no sugar alcohols. So no erythritol, nothing like that, just straight up monk fruit, good tasting bars that are totally plant-based. They have keto bars, they have regular protein bars. Now I've talked about Boo on this channel a bunch. They have their cookie dough stuff that I really love. If you're doing a low carb or doing keto diet, anything like that, perfect for that. But they have a broad spectrum of different products and they built their name just surrounding making good, clean bars. Delicious if you're just trying to get some protein in and you're really wanting that texture of something really thick and creamy. Probably some of the most satiating bars that I've ever had. And if you're doing low carb, their keto bars are some of the best in the business, if not the best in the business too. That same creamy consistency and cookie dough feeling that you would get from their cookie dough jars, but in a bar. Okay, so when we are insulin resistant, it's not just our muscle cells that are insulin resistant. Okay, so it's not just like we're not sucking up glucose into the cell, it's, it goes beyond that. Okay, insulin regulates a lot of what's happening at a fat cell level too. And what's very, very interesting is that when you are insulin resistant, your fat cells are insulin resistant and they actually liberate more fats into the bloodstream. You go through sort of this automatic lipolysis that you don't want. It's like the one time in the world that you don't want to just be liberating fats. Normally, if we go out for a run, we want lipolysis to occur. We want lipolysis to allow fatty acids into the bloodstream so that then we can use those fatty acids. But if fatty acids are just getting dumped into the bloodstream because the cells are like insulin resistant and they're just leaking fats into the bloodstream, that is when hyperlipidemia, that is when lipotoxicity can occur. Okay, now here's what happens with lipotoxicity. Now you have a bunch of fatty acids floating through the bloodstream and they are going to circulate and they are going to go to the liver. And guess what they're going to do? They're going to deposit around the liver. So it's interesting, insulin resistance leads to fatty liver without even consuming the horrible demon of fructose, the evil fructose or evil fruit, right? It's, which isn't really evil, I'm being completely sarcastic, but the point is, is that you are sort of automatically liberating these lipids. And the only way that you can really stave that off is two very clear ways. You either stop eating and periodically fast so that this does not happen, or you exercise. So you actually become insulin sensitive independent of needing insulin, right? So, or, so you basically are allowing the cells to become more fluid and allowing things to actually flow in and out of the cell because you're moving. That way you don't even have to eat to get that effect and you're not trying to manipulate it through different food sources and things like that. So people don't realize that a fatty liver can come as a result of being insulin resistant, okay? And then whatever you are eating, you probably are going to have an exacerbated effect from. This is the one kind of situation where I think, yes, if you're insulin resistant, beyond just reducing calories, you probably do want to reduce carbohydrate intake if you're not active. It's that simple. If you're not active, the carbohydrates are going to contribute to more of a fatty liver than they would if you were active. If you're a healthy person that is not insulin resistant, the carbohydrates probably aren't as big of a problem for you. This is where you really have to see where you are at. So one of the things that I think you should do to determine this overall is you should get what is called a HOMA IR test, okay? So go to your doctor, tell them you want a HOMA IR. It's gonna tell you basically what your lagging indicator is, how high your insulin levels have been over the last 60, 90 days, essentially. And this paints a very nice picture of if you're insulin resistant or not, more so than just uh, glucose tests. Additionally, if you cannot do a HOMA IR, I would recommend getting your postprandial glucose levels tested. Okay, so test your glucose two hours after you eat and do it after every meal for like a week. Okay, and I want you to see how high your glucose is. If your glucose is continually staying above 150 or 200 two hours after you're eating, there's a good chance that you have a level of insulin resistance there. Okay. Now, you can apply a lot of the things that I talk about in videos, but the quickest way to get through that is to move the body and to exercise. Do not be afraid of fruit, because at the end of the day, fruit isn't going to be the problem. 
It's the concentrated amounts of fructose that you're getting from Snickers bars, from Cokes and things like that, that are unnatural amounts that allow the fructokinase C to sort of degrade your body, if you want to call it that. Okay. So at the end of the day, the fatty liver comes almost secondarily from the overall insulin resistance that's happening in the first place. And then it just gets worse and worse and worse from there. So you solve one issue and you solve the other. I'll see you tomorrow.